Yo, what's up guys, welcome back to another video, and today we're back with baseball, but this one's a bit different. So this, the title is D Gordon's emotional home run for Jose Fernandez deserves a deep rewind. This was a highly, highly suggested video on my last baseball reaction, but again, this is something a bit different. This is kind of more like a, not storyline, but like, sort of like, sort of like teaching me about something. And clearly this was a big moment in the sport, because this guy passed away, which is obviously awful. But again, you guys really suggested this and I want I'm like interested to see about it because stories like this in sport are always like the most heartwarming for example in soccer there's like been players who have had heart attacks on the field and then like, and passed away sadly and then they had like um tributes for them made by the players and it's just one of the most incredible things to see and this is obviously maybe it's not in the same sort of it's not the same sort of situation because I don't know if it was an on-field thing or whatever but it's still going to be like, wow, this is like a big, big, like big moment for the sport and really, really emotional. But yeah, I really enjoy these kind of things. And again, you guys really wanted me to see this and I'm just sort of interested to see. So yeah, let's just get into it. It's September 26th, 2016. We're at Marlins Park in Miami, Florida with Bartolo Colon pitching for the Mets in the bottom of the first. With no runs on the board, the Marlins leadoff hitter D Gordon waits for the 2-0 pitch. Look, I know, on paper, the stakes are low. There's no championship up for grabs. We're only three outs into the game. But this next pitch will become part of a moment so much more impactful than even a World Series would be for Miami. To appreciate something that's bigger than just one game or sports in general, we need to rewind. For sure, bigger than... There are so many things bigger than sports. Gordon is I've, heard, I've heard people say before, it's like a saying, um, well, it's a saying for soccer. Soccer is the most important thing of the most... It's the most important thing of the most un unimportant things. And I guess that sort of... The same sort of saying comes to any sport. Baseball is the most important thing of the most unimportant things. He's about to have one of the That's most a situation of it, isn't it? Of his career. But it's coming during a season that he'd probably rather look past. Not because of anything he did or didn't do on the field, more so because of the fact that he couldn't be on the field for much of 2016. In April, he received an 80-game suspension, which was a big blow to a Marlins games. team that managed just 71 wins a year before wow. with Gordon playing in 145 games. And by playing, I mean he dominated. It took him just 28 games to record his 50th hit, and by season's end, he led the National League in hits batting average, and stolen bases. So he was one of the best players. Which all paired nicely with his first Gold Glove award. Doing so in his first season in Miami, he was part of a core making the Marlins fun, or at least watchable again. What Gordon lacked in power, he more than made up for in speed, which he showed off on June Jesus. 30th, 2015 against the Giants when he legged out an inside oh, the park home run. So far. This was his first homer of the season and one of just eight that he would have in his five-year career entering 2016. Wow. He didn't add to that total in the first 21 games of the season before getting suspended, nor has he in the 53 since his return. Damn. And while his numbers have slipped from the year before, considering he was otherworldly in 2015, Gordon's doing just fine. He showed very little rest from the 80 games off. The trouble yeah, is, man. with or without Gordon, the Marlins are all but mathematically eliminated from the postseason for the 13th straight season. Oh, jeez. It'll even be a struggle to finish 500. So they're one of those sort of, like, teams that are always teetering on getting to the playoffs, but they're just not just good enough, I guess. And considering who they're facing tonight, it will be just a bit tougher. Partially because Cologne is famously big and even more famously <laughs> sexy, which can cause a distraction. But also, uh, he's a good pitcher. And with the start tonight, he and the Mets have a bit more to play for as they look to lock up a wild card spot for their first postseason appearance since last year. If they can, it'll be New York's first back-to-back -back playoffs since the 99 and 2000 seasons, wow, which was 20 all the way years. back when Cologne was a sweet Starry-eyed Oh boy, he's been playing for that long. Okay, that's crazy. Seven-year-old. That was seven teams, one 50-game suspension for PEDs, and just a couple LBs ago for the pitcher. Much like Gordon, Cologne came out of his 2012 suspension looking fresh. He finished the year with the second most wins in the AL and led the league in complete game shutouts. 
That earned him a nice contract from the Mets, which Colon repaid by recording his most strikeouts since his Cy Young winning 2005 season. And before tonight, in 2016, he had been pretty solid, especially over his last 10 games when the Mets needed it the most. And they needed it tonight. How long, and this is a, this is a bit out of context, but how long is someone's baseball career, like the average baseball career? Because I, I feel like they could play for longer because you're not going to lose your, your power in your arms when you're batting until you're like mid 50s maybe so like the power is always going to still be there for the batters and the bowlers so like what is like the age range of the average sort of baseball player because i would probably guess maybe 20 to 30 years but i might be completely wrong and also it might depend on what position you're because the catchers obviously will need to be more mobile that's something that i'm quite interested facing a marlins team that's playing for so much more than whatever fleeting postseason hopes exist and regardless of which side is pitching Miami would have a presence on the mound. That number 16 wasn't going anywhere, especially not from the oh, hearts and minds of Marlins players, coaches, or fans. Miami's star, the young ace Jose Fernandez, was found dead less than two days earlier after a boat he was in crashed into a jetty. Oh, this wow. devastated his teammates, their That's entire awesome. city, and the league as a whole. No one wanted to believe his story would end like this. He arrived in the U.S. as a 15-year-old after his fourth attempt to defect from Cuba. Oh, On the journey sucks. over, he dove into the water to save a woman who had fallen in, which turned out to be his mother. Jeez. After settling in Tampa, he won a pair of high school state titles and drew the eyes of Marlins management who selected him 14th overall in the 2011 draft. He struck out eight over five innings in his debut on April 7, 2013 against the Mets, and while a New York comeback in the ninth spoiled his result, he'd go on to earn NL Rookie of the Year honors and finish third in Cy Young voting. That in sucks. So I'm that, guessing he was one of like, he was an upcoming, like a superstar basically, but he was young, so he was obviously gonna reach his potential. And the way that-, that happened, In his final game of the season, he crushed a ball that went out for his first career home run against Atlanta. Wow. Kid, Absolute baller. And it also led to the bench's clearing once he made it home after Atlanta disapproved of him spitting his way around third and taking a little too long to look at the ball. When it came to his pitching, some argued it was the greatest season by a rookie in MLB history. Wow. So to no one's surprise, Fernandez got the nod to be the Marlins' opening day starter in his second season, making Jesus, him the youngest to do that in the NL since Dwight Gooden in 1986. And although his season came to an end in May, he returned halfway through 2015 looking like the ace the Marlins needed. That carried into this season for Fernandez, which included an unbeaten May, part of eight straight starts that ended with him earning the win. Wow. In his final outing against the division-leading Nationals, he struck out 12 across eight scoreless innings, and afterward told a teammate that he felt it was the best game he'd ever pitched. But when he passed away, it wasn't tragic because he was a great pitcher. It devastated the communities because he was loved as a person. Tonight at Marlins Park, you could see that in the stands and around the stadium with memorials popping up as they had throughout all of Miami. And oh, you could sucks. also see it on every Marlins player, physically in the fact that they all wore his jersey in tribute, but Fair also play. in the emotions openly on display for the last 36 how, hours. How long would have this been after the, it happened? Was this like a few days after, like a week after? Like how long after would it have been? Hours. The Marlins canceled their game on the day of Fernandez's death, oh. and many took the time to open up about the 24-year-old. The theme of their memories was the joy he brought to and took from baseball. Marlins manager Don Mattingly likened him to how kids play the game, having never lost that early passion. Eduardo Perez said that all Fernandez wanted to do was have fun and be on that mound and play the game. Not work the game, but play the game. And he played it beautifully. Just have fun. Marlins president David Sampson, backed by the entire team, this spoke at length about Jose and referenced the fact that they would make sure no one forgot the man that Fernandez was. His story is representative of a story of hope and of love and of faith, and no one will ever let that story die. Those who had grown up... That's the worst part, isn't it? Like, the, the story like, of him being in Cuba and trying, he's been trying, like, I say his whole life, but he's, he had a, a period of time when he was just trying to get to America. And he obviously finally got that break. 
And the way that happens, oh, that actually is awful. Stories like this are so, like, they're depressing to see, but it's like, it's, I'm guessing the end of the video, but near the end, it's going to be one of the most sort of heartwarming things. So it's leading up to something, I know. But man, stuff like this, I hate it in sport. Not in the sport, just in general. Can't imagine what the fans felt like, the family. Up with him over the last few Obviously years, teammates. expressed their love, their hurt, and how much they'd miss Fernandez's daily positivity. Gordon posted on his Instagram a sentiment shared by many teammates. They were family, and they'd lost a brother. Ahead of the opening pitch tonight, they surrounded the mound with number 16 for What's a that? moment of silence in the national anthem. I love as that so much. players fought through tears. Oh, no. The Mets crossed the infield, and both teams embraced following the anthem, showing the impact felt by the entire league. Miami took to the mound as a team and left messages in the dirt for their pitcher before taking their places as their first game without Jose began. But the tribute was far from over, and even the first pitch of this at-bat had purpose. D. Gordon has batted lefty his entire career, so where he's currently at, it makes sense. But when he came to the plate, he stepped into the office. Oh, so they played wearing it as well. Settling in as a righty, just like Jose, wearing his Gordon actually name mimicked on the show. Fernandez's batting stance to a T. Oh, knee wow. wiggle and all. After taking ball one, he swapped out equipment. And I would guess that was Jose's helmet. <laughs> and returned to his natural side where he took ball two. Fair play, I rate that With so much, With less than two actually. days separating this pitch from Fernandez's death, every emotion has filtered through these players, this organization and their fans. In and outside the stadium located in Little Havana, memorials grow, honoring the man who loved baseball but openly loved life even more. And while the healing process needed more time, for today at least, they were back to just playing baseball. But Gordon, who has never been mistaken for a power hitter, has one more salute for his brother. Welcome to a moment in history. Gordon to right. It's deep. What a hit. And it's gone. Jeez, got a home run. What a legend, man. Oh, I hate seeing stuff like this. Oh. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Here's something happier and more. Honestly, like, that is so hard, man. Nothing. And while, like, it says he's not known for being a power hitter, which I, I guess that means he's not known for getting, like, hitting as, as far as he just did then. So, it's like, to get, like, that power in that sort of situation, it's kind of like, oh, it's all, like, led up to this kind of thing. Seeing his reaction after though, mate, that sucks. Like in a, it, it sucks obviously with the situation, but this is an insane sort of moment. Fair play to him. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Here's something happier and much more lighthearted. It's my treat for you. Or if you want to keep this train going, check out our episode about how the Marlins. Class video from SB Nation. I've done those videos before and they all seem to be incredible. But Jesus, man, I can see why you guys wanted me to see this. <sighs> Story like this, like, I don't like it's, it's, I'm probably going to re read into this more, actually, because this does sort of like, I want to know more about this guy individually and learn more about him himself. Maybe I should see highlights of his sort of best players as well, because like seeing as like what he said about his stats, he was one of the best players. And at such a young age as well, man, one awful situation. What are like the baseball, like, if you're, well, you're baseball fans, obviously, what are your like, thoughts on this like how did the baseball world react to it was it like all the teams sort of came together and like not teams like all the fans came together and like had a sort of i don't know how to explain it like was it just seen as like one of the worst sort of losses in the sport because is there any other situations that are like this in any other sport like what could this compare to maybe i'm guessing there's been situations like this before like when a, a promising star has either passed away or has passed away and like, you can't, you don't get to see their full potential. Man, we appreciate the suggestions. Any more like this, I'd actually really appreciate because I do like find these videos really like, obviously sad, but it's like a story behind it and you can sort of learn about the players. Just comment down below. And yeah, until next time, like, subscribe, peace.